Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Hi, welcome back to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to intro a talk that I did with a dear friend of mine months ago. But over the past few weeks, the interviews that we have been putting out, I noticed that almost all of the women, without exception, have been talking about journaling. And personally, I've been going through some things in my life. And it always brings me back to what a blessing journaling is in my life, especially when I'm struggling with anything emotionally. And I think that we all go through those things in life where we just need that, I don't know, that respite, I guess. And journaling is definitely that for me. So I hope that in this upcoming training, if you will, you will take some clips of things that maybe if you've never journaled before, it will prompt you to journal. And if you're someone that is already an avid journaler, you're probably going to say, oh yeah, I do that. Or, oh, that's a that's an interesting way to look at it. But I would love to even kind of nudge you all a little bit more in that if you haven't been to our website, Mom's Making Six Figures, we do have on there a downloadable journal. And for the first 50 of you that reach out to me, whether it be through social media or you're free to email me, it's just Heidi at Mom's Making Six Figures, I will actually send you one of the hard copies of our journals. And I would love your feedback on how you journal and what a blessing it has been in your life enjoy this upcoming talk that I did with my dear friend, Jen. Hi, my name is Heidi Bartoletta, and I am the host of the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. And this is my dear friend, Jennifer Becker. And we're going to talk about journals today. Fun stuff. Yeah. So um, we thought that we would talk a little bit about how we've used journals at different stages of our lives and um, just kind of what they were like as a resource for us. So I'll start out with you. So journaling, when the girls were really young, or maybe even before you had them, when you were pregnant with Cameron, were you journaling then? I know you were working a lot of hours. It's kind of funny. I, th- I think I started like trying to start journaling in my early 20s, but all of a sudden something significant like a pregnancy, there's certain things you just want to remember. Mm-hmm. So that's when I started, but there were definitely like weeks where I'd be really good and then weeks where I'd forget and then I'd pick it back up. So yeah, here yeah. and there. I... um I remember journaling a lot when I was younger, but to your point, I think for me, a really significant time period, my daughters were two and four and there was just a lot going on. I, you know, after the second child, it felt like time kind of evaporated. And, um, I remember, remember using journaling a lot at that point to remember things that they were doing because I knew that at that point I probably would forget a lot of the things that they said and a lot of the things that they did. But also because I was working, it also really gave me the ability to, and you and I talk about this a lot, focus on um, what I was grateful for in a day. So when I did have really stressful days, I was able to note down things about them, but also just gratitude in a lot of ways. And I think that helped me a lot mentally as a working mom. Yeah. I would definitely say having a career and young children, there's things I was really hard on myself about. So I would find myself, you know, journaling one thing I was grateful for, but then also one thing that I was forgiving myself for, like maybe I wasn't the mom I wanted to be, or maybe I was a little short with the kids today and kind of just that like blessing and releasing it to allow me to start the new day fresh. Mm -hmm. Did you use it at all for, um, for planning or for personal development or at that phase? Were you doing, were you doing any of that? Yeah, I think I find, you know, in reading different books, there's things I want to remember. So I might write a really good quote in the journal Mm -hmm. or just really writing down a takeaway or something that I want to remember. Um, Just different books you read or different podcasts you hear, you know, I might write it like on a back of a receipt, but then I'll go write it 
in my journal later. And sometimes even the fact of rewriting it, it just kind of solidifies that specific thought that I want to remember. And I think now, you know, for a few years, so I think there's different stages in life with your kids, right? And things change. But I remember as the girls got a little bit older, and um, not only was I writing in my journal things about them, but I was also putting a lot of my professional goals in there and kind of watching myself develop in that. And you mentioned quotes. I love quotes. You know this about me. And um, so many of us take pictures of quotes on our phone and I would find myself scrolling through like the pictures, but the ones that really resonated with me, I would write down in my journal because I'd flip back through that at times. And it was a really good reminder of um, sometimes it had things to do with where I was mentally with my kids, with my career, just all of it. And I think sometimes those quotes are really good. Like, this is where you were. <laughs> well, right? it's kind of the legacy you're leaving behind. I was incredibly close with my grandmother. And one of the memories I have after she passed was it was in her room by myself. My mom and my aunt had cleaned through a lot of things, but I found her journal. Mm-hmm. And it was just kind of fun to flip through that and realize similarities, different mom things that were struggles back then or still struggles today. And it just gave me a little bit of a glimpse of who she was in her 20s or her 30s or her 40s. So I hope to leave that to my girls. And yeah, sometimes my journal is like chicken scratch and random thoughts or goals. But then also, I hope someday they're going to read really funny memories, like things they say, you know, writing that down. My mom always says, write it down because you won't remember it later. And there's definitely some things that, you know, I look forward to maybe writing them a letter on their wedding day or something. And I'll flip through that journal because there's a lot of just funny memories that I've written down. So true. So let's talk about it a little bit in terms of business. Obviously, a lot of our podcast listeners are women that are scaling their businesses, maybe whether it's in a corporate or in an um, an entrepreneurial venture to six figures. How have you used it for business? Do you use journals for business? How has it impacted you? Definitely. I I probably have more notebooks than I definitely need to, but um, I love writing down goals. Mm -hmm. And then I like to kind of almost at the end of each month, write down things that I've accomplished maybe things I could have done better or things that maybe I didn't accomplish, but I want to carry over Mm -hmm. because at the end of the year, when you flip through that, it's really this almost like this progress report where you get to see, Oh, I did do that. You know, sometimes I think I'm not as far in my career as I want to be. But then when I look through old journals, I'm like, well, you're a lot further than you were, you know, back five years ago, back 10 years ago. So it's Mm -hmm. almost like this timeline that you can kind of, see your progress and writing notes to yourself, you know, writing yourself a thank you note or just, again, having gratitude or maybe the things that you want to improve on, kind of putting some action. A lot of times I might write something that I want to improve on and then I'll put some bullet points underneath it. Mm -hmm. Like what could I have done better? Or, you know, I have to write notes to myself, practice patience. I'm not the most patient person. And as a mother, (laughs) definitely have to practice patience. And sometimes I'll, you know, research that or go listen to a podcast on whatever area that I'm trying to improve in so that I can journal maybe some steps or tips to help me achieve that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the practical use of a journal. So I think that sometimes when, especially speaking to women that are, you know, mothers and Um, really pushing themselves in their careers, whatever that looks like for them. It's almost like we are prone to add another to do to our checklist for the day. And so the one thing that I would just caution all of you on is I feel like for me, when I journal, it's more like a downtime where I'm feeding myself. I don't, I don't have it on my to-do list where it feels like a task. And because of that, I really, really enjoy it. So if you're someone that doesn't currently journal (laughs) and you're deciding that this is something that you're going to do, don't add it as a task. Maybe start writing out things that bring you joy or start writing out cute things about your kids or something that you're proud of in your career, but don't don't make it like another thing that you have to do because then I think you won't really enjoy it. So I always look at it like, 
Um, I kind of have this time during the day that's typically a downtime for me now. I have teenage girls now. And for me, um, at this stage, I really like to write kind of like the things that they do that hopefully one day they will think are funny. <laughs> because right now, sometimes they're challenging. So it's a way for me to express gratitude on things that they're challenging me on. Yeah. 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 But it feels like sure. a blessing to me. So. Yeah. And sometimes I'm really consistent with it. You know, there might be days in a row, but sometimes it becomes a weekly thing. Like mm -hmm. for me, I don't know. My house always feels quiet. Like on a Sunday afternoon, I think everyone's relaxing after sports or a full day of Saturday activities. And I'll find myself just kind of writing things out that I want to remember things I want to accomplish. And mm -hmm. so you can kind of use it. I would say in whatever way works for you, you don't necessarily have to, I think people hear the word journal and it's like, you're writing about your day, like dear diary when, you know, back when you're 13 with the little diary with the lock on it, but it can really be what suits you. But the biggest thing I find is when you write something down, especially if you're goal setting or just, you know, putting different intentions you have out mm -hmm. there. I find when I write it down, it's more likely to happen. There's that practice Absolutely. of writing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I would even say I am definitely not blessed with the creative gene. So if I tried to draw something, it would be horrific. But there are some people that are so amazing at that, that I think if you're somebody that's artistic, you could also do drawing in there. You know, I, I have a friend that's amazingly artistic. And when you look at just the things that are in there from family to travel. And um, it's inspiring to see that. So that I think you handled, you handle it in the, or you do it in the way that really feeds you. So, yeah. Yeah. Any, any last bits of wisdom? After and you said travel, that kind of sparked, mm -hmm. you know, after a trip, I love to write just different things that happened or different memories we made, because that's something that, you know, sometimes your kids are young, they won't remember all the details, but that's mm -hmm. another good one is, you know, you might want to have a separate travel journal, you know, for your different travels. So your kids can look back and, oh, we went there, we did that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So for those of you that we, I grabbed this, but if you haven't been to our um, website, you can actually download, we have a journal there that you can download for free. And um, I think it's beautiful, but you know, <laughs> So if you don't already have a journal, we would love to provide you one. So thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Hopefully this little training, if you will, today really helped you to take a few nuggets in journaling and apply it to your life. And as always, our goal at Moms Making Six Figures is really to help you to live a much more inspired life. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.